Hello and welcome back to the iHeat YouTube channel. Today we're doing a bit of a different video and it's actually a comparison video between the Worcester Bosch ranges. We've got the 1000, the 2000 and the 8000 Life. All three boilers are great to look at. I'd have them on display in my kitchen, as you would all know. The 1000 obviously being the newest with that modern, affordable look. The 2000 being that budget friendly with some power option. And then the Worcester 8000 being the absolute beast of the boiler world. Straight off the bat, the Worcester Bosch 8000 Life being the biggest of all three boilers. As you can see, it takes up half the frame, but in reality, the 2000 is just a smaller version with an analog pressure gauge next to the screen. They both have the tactile buttons, the old color display. So appearance wise, it's pretty a fair game. Some people may even prefer the 1000 as it is so small, you can stick it in a cupboard and forget about it. In today's video, we'll be breaking down the convenience of all the boilers, their usability, the kilowatt outputs, the flow rates, the dimensions, the usual stuff you'll see in our reviews. But instead of having to watch all three of our reviews, you can just watch a simple comparison video to help you make that important decision. Let's get these off the wall, onto the bench. Let's get the covers off. And let's start this comparison video. To start off with the obvious, they're all from Worcester Bosch. They all have that great, well-renowned brand name, the great customer service on their end, and some great guarantees as well. I say guarantees because unlike most other boiler companies, they don't offer warranties, they offer guarantees, which is a bit more solid and probably makes you feel a bit better about buying the boiler from that certain brand. They're all easy to control. They all have aluminum silicon heat exchangers, and they have some cool features like the quick tap function from Worcester. For those who don't know, this is where you can open your tap for three seconds, close it again, wait a few seconds for your boiler to heat up and open your tap for instant hot water. This reduces your cold water wastage when you're waiting for your water to get hot. Dimensions wise, the Worcester Bosch 1000 has a height of 655 millimeters, a width of 395, and then a depth of 285. This means it can fit in a standard kitchen cupboard of 300 mil. And if you're just upgrading your current combi boiler, it can go in the same cupboard it was previously in. If you are designing a kitchen and you don't want a big ugly cupboard that would fit this kind of boiler in, definitely look at the 1000. Dimensions wise for the Worcester 2000, you've got a height of 724 millimeters, a width of 400 millimeters, and then a depth of 300 millimeters. So we're cutting it a bit fine to fit in a standard kitchen cupboard with a depth of 300 mil. You just wouldn't get the right clearances. I can see this being a more of an apartment boiler. You'll have it in like a bit of a small cupboard where you wouldn't really notice it. Whereas if you've got this size boiler inside your apartment, you wouldn't have much apartment left. So it is still compact. It is a good form factor, good size. But if space is a priority, the 1000 is the best way to go. Dimensions wise for the Worcester Bosch 8000, you've got a height of 780 millimeters, a width of 440, and then a depth of 365. So there is no chance that's fitting in a kitchen cupboard. I have mine on display in the middle of my kitchen just because I think I like the look of it. I think everyone who comes around has different opinions, but that's, that's just people. Mine is the style, so it has the nice dots on the front and it looks very appealing. It looks like more of a display art piece maybe, as compared to just a boiler heating up my water. It of course can fit in your old airing cupboard where maybe your tanks would be from a system boiler. It of course could fit in your airing cupboard if you were doing a conversion, you could take out the hot water tank and put this in its place. It would fit in there nice and easy, would look pretty good too, and it is just a great use of the space. Converting an airing cupboard into a wardrobe or storage area isn't always what you wanna spend your weekends doing, so Stick a boiler in there and forget about it. I think one of the other major differences in these three boilers is their power output and their flow rates. The Worcester Bosch 1000 comes in two kilowatt options with a 24 and a 30. This then has corresponding flow rates of 9.8 liters per minute in the 24 and 12.2 liters per minute in the 30 kilowatt. For the price, this is a great amount of flow rate and the majority of homes don't even have more than 12 liters per minute coming into the property from the mains. When you're thinking about getting a new boiler, always consider, do I have high water pressure? Is my shower powerful? Are my taps powerful? And if they aren't, it's more often than not the boiler's fault. It's, it's never the boiler's fault. It's normally just the mains pressure at your property, and that's what you get. For example, my property didn't have the best water pressure, but it still felt pretty high. So I got a 30 kilowatt style, which had enough flow rate for my property. Anything higher just would have been a waste of time. The Worcester Bosch 2000 has very similar flow rates compared to the 1000, and it comes in two kilowatt options at 25 and 30. This with corresponding flow rate of 10 liters per minute in the 25 
and 12 litres per minute in the 30. So that 0.2 has got dropped off somewhere. Please bear in mind though, the 1000 is newer than the 2000. I think if you're in the market for a new boiler and you're looking at these three options and you need a 30 kilowatt boiler, I think the Worcester 2000 is a good place to go for. I only got a Worcester 8000 style because I was a bit obsessed with how it would look. I wanted something flashy, I watched something I could film every day. Uh, so the 8000 is what I went for. I got the bottom end 30 kilowatt, even though it goes all the way up to 50, which is ridiculous, which we'll get to in a minute. But in hindsight, the Worcester Bosch 8000, as I said, comes all the way up to 50 kilowatts, starting at 30, 35, 40, 45, and a 50 kilowatt version. However, the flow rates go from 11 liters per minute in the 30, all the way up to 18 liters per minute in the 50 kilowatt model, which I don't know any UK house with 18 liters per minute coming in, so it's probably just a waste of time going that high. Definitely explore the options of the 30 to 40 range. The main reason for this high flow rate is the plate heat exchanger. On the 8000, it literally takes up almost the whole width of the boiler, which is 440 mil, as mentioned before. On the Worcester 2000, you can actually see it if I pop down this flap. It is in the very back there, a bit awkward to get to. And that is a good size for this size of boiler. It's around 150 mil wide, it's nice and thick. And that's how it gets the 12 liters per minute in the 30 kilowatt. Uh, and the same with the 1000. Overall, there are quite a few differences between the three boilers and obviously the main one being cost. I think if you are really keeping your eyes on bills, efficiency and space, the Worcester 1000 is the best place to go. I think this boiler's come out at the perfect time. Everyone's struggling to pay bills and they've got this cost of living crisis and this boiler really does solve that issue. You can get this fitted for very low cost, which at the moment is what everyone needs. Let me know your comments below what boiler you prefer out of the three. If money was no object, would you go for the Beast 8000? Would you get a 50 kilowatt, something stupid? Or do you think cheap and cheerful, the 1000 does its job? You don't really care about having a flashy boiler. It's going in a cupboard, you don't care what it looks like. I think the 1000 is a great place to look at. For a more in-depth review on each boiler, do check out our YouTube page. We have a load of videos about each one and the other Worcester boilers, as well as the Valence, the Viesmans, the Alphas out there, the new Navian, everything's on here. So please do subscribe if it's something you're interested in. Share to a friend who is currently looking at a new boiler as well. And that is it for the comparison video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. This has been our heat.